Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out another smaller kit, in this case a very unique one again as well. This one is the Fiddler Crab from Orange Cat Industries and Miz and Lucky Pig 23 is the collaboration on that, I guess from uh, the, some of the designers behind this. This is the red silver color version of it. I believe it is available in different colors, although I'm not sure. This is the one that I've generally seen online. As you can see, it's a pretty small little box here, but really interesting, cool packaging here for this. So definitely very much like a novelty model kit, but really cool, really fun. I really like the design of this. I imagine just like a mecha fiddler crab model kit. Sounds cool to me. So let's go ahead and check it out here for today's video. All right, so yeah, let's take a moment to just appreciate the packaging here for this one. I do like the fact that it has such unique packaging. There it is, uh, agro aquaculture tank there for that. Here on the back side, you can see also aquaculture tank 008 fiddler crab. All of our logos and labeling everything around here. The sides of the box are black and the front side you can see here on this uh, clear plastic kind of sheath for the box has like the outline of the crab, so it works together like that, but then when you kind of separate that off, it's just an image there. Uh, I wanna say the painted kit, but actually maybe probably not painted, just the like a CG render of the kit there with all the markings on it. So I believe we are gonna have some water side decals in there that you can use for that to mark it up like so. But we can remove the top part of the packaging, which is going to look like that. On the inside, it's sort of, I guess it's maybe meant to look like a sort of, I guess, Place where you can put it. It just looks like a road, actually. It could have could have been cool to make it look as like a background that you could have from behind the crab, but it looks like a road, so it should be on the ground. Anyway, here are our runners inside. A number of them, quite a few, maybe more than you might expect. They are pretty small in size. We'll take a look at those in just a moment. But first, here's a look at those water slide decals. These look really nice, actually. We've got some very cool markings in white and black primarily, but then some orange, yellow, and blue on there as well, which look very, really, really nice. And you'll have plenty of extras. I Think there's no way that you're going to be able to use or that you would want to use all of these on here so you'll probably use you know a handful on the kit and then you'll have plenty of really cool extra decals that you can use for other custom projects and then here is our instruction manual which is just this uh, fold out accordion paper it does have a parts list and then it's just construction of the kit all the way to the end on the back side and then there is a decal guide there at the end as well and that's it for that all right let's check out the runners here is runner a which is in this clear fluorescent orange looks very nice Nice and high gloss, so that should be very cool. Runner B is in like a clear smoke kind of color there, also will look very nice. Runner C is our parts for the legs, also in high gloss. This is in a kind of gunmetal metallic color though for the legs, and it looks like obviously here, as you can see, these are going to be sandwiched together with some seam lines on those, unfortunately, but we'll see how those look. Runner D is also in clear orange, but very different from runner A, and that this is like a dark clear orange, so that should be really cool. Very unique colors here, obviously. Lastly, Runner E is in a molded silver, which should also make for some nice little accent details. So, all right, that's it for the runners. A lot of cool little parts here. Let's go ahead and get it put together and see what it looks like. All right, and then once it's all put together, here's how it's gonna look. I haven't really done anything with this except for on the legs because they are like sandwiched together and I do want to remove those seam lines as best as I can. I did put some glue on those and like haven't sanded it away yet. Uh, and just did a little bit of sanding on like some of the gunmetal or like metallic parts there. Otherwise, just kind of simple snap together here. I'll give you guys a look around the kit as I kind of talk about it a little bit. I was thinking to leave the clear parts clear, all the different clear parts, the, like the bright fluorescent orange, the darker orange, and the kind of smoke clear and then paint all the metallic bits into like just kind of a, a matte gray or something like that. So it'd have a nice kind of contrast between the glossy clear parts and the kind of more quote unquote like realistic painted um, parts, which are metallic now, but I was gonna paint them in just kind of a mixture of matte gray, whatever kind of uh, mechanical looking colors on those. But I was looking around online and then I found this post on Reddit and I wanna be sure to shout out the modeler here, Valley Toy Collectors, who posted this painted build on Reddit, who I'm probably gonna be stealing the idea from. Not so much stealing the idea, but just stealing the idea of just kind of painting the whole kit in a more kind of realistic sort of way and just basically getting rid of most of the clear plastic. So I wanted to give you guys first just a look at how the kit is gonna look. If you aren't planning on painting it, you just wanna just build it up and just uh, have it just straight out of the box like this. I think it does look really cool like this. For me personally, I'm gonna just go for painting it more and just like in a more kind of traditional painting style here, making it kind of weathered like a little, actual little robot clat 
actual little robot crab and maybe just leave the eye parts in probably be the only parts that are going to be left in clear. Another good reason to do that is just because the decals, it has some cool decals in there and the decals placed on top of the clear parts don't really look that great in my opinion and they look a whole lot better on top of like uh, just regular painting so I think that's what's going to be the plan from this. So let me go ahead and do some more just kind of clean up on this getting it ready for paint a little bit more sanding and filing on some of these parts just to get everything all looking good. We'll get some paint on here and then see how she looks. All right, so all the base painting's done and there's some kind of cool stuff here that I wanna show you guys before showing you this jumping to the finished product anyway. So for the colors that I used for this, I was kind of going back and forth with it. And for the main body, I use this blue color and I've talked about this before. I keep a couple of these uh, larger spare bottles basically for any time I'm making like a custom color and there's a little bit left over. I can't put it back in the jar just because it's already custom mixed and then it would mess up the color of that jar. So if it's like any sort of like custom mixed color blue and I just toss it into this one. And so this color is kind of ever changing. The same thing with this one, any kind of like red or yellow or orange kind of color that I'm custom mixing. If I have a little bit left over after I'm done with it, just toss it in here and so this color is now sort of like an orangish peach kind of color and that's what I used for like the claw part which I think also looks very nice so there's that. Then for the metallic bits this is where it's going to get extra interesting because I used uh, Mr. Metal Color Iron for the dark color and then I did do a couple of parts here these couple little bits and Mr. Metal Color Brass. Now, the really interesting thing about these Mr. Metal Colors, if you look on here on the directions, which I know is gonna be very difficult for you guys to see, it says, after Mr. Metal Color is dry, burnish it with a soft cloth. You can actually burnish this to get a different look, and you can already see it's kind of like a little bit scuffed there. But here's how it's gonna look before, like with just spraying it right onto the part. But then if you take a cloth, or in this case, I'm just gonna use a paper towel and just, you know, just kind of wipe it down. You guys will see. I want to show you this in real time, so I'm not going to cut the video just because it's so magical how this works. Just rub it down with, again, just any kind of cloth, uh, paper towel, whatever you want to use, napkin, and voila! Instant transformation to looking much, much different. Just to show you guys a comparison to one that's uh, burnished and one that's not. That's what's so cool about these Mr. Mr. Metal colors burnishing them just instantly makes them look amazing. So they look really cool. It's gonna be much less noticeable here on the brass or the gold piece, uh, just because it's a small little piece, but let's see if we can, uh, how much of a difference this is gonna make here. Just if I can try to rub this part down a little bit here too. And I mean, I think it looks uh, slightly different there. I may have rubbed it a little bit too much as you can see, it kind of looked like maybe it kind of rubbed off a little bit there on a couple of the edges, but uh, here is the one that I didn't do anything with, and then this one which was a little bit burnish. You can see it does look a little bit different, a little bit shinier, a little bit uh, more sparkly there, and you can say I did kind of rub it off a little bit too much on the edges, so I guess maybe be a little bit careful of that. I am planning on doing some like uh, weathering on this anyway, so I think that just kind of, it works out for me. It's not gonna be an issue in this case, but obviously if you don't mean to do that, it's something to look out for, so. It's not a super parts heavy kit, so it's not too many parts here to work on. Just going to get the rest of the like painting and detail work and then a little bit of weathering done here on this. And I'll come back with the finished results for you guys here in just a moment. All right, and so here is the finished product. As you can see, I decided to do a little bit more with this and pretty much like uh, lean fully into uh, mimicking the build that I found there online. So again, just wanna make sure I give a shout out to the original builder there. But as you can see, the colors came out really nice on this. I'm really happy with how the ultimate uh, finished look came out here for this. I did do a little bit of weathering on there as well. Basically just some uh, weathering with some Mr. Weathering color on there and just kind of give it a little bit of like some filtering over everything. I did a little bit of chipping on there as well. Attempted a little bit of some scratches there on like the front of the big claw. I don't think really came out looking very well. You guys can let me know what you think of how those scratches on the front of the look. I don't think that I'm very good at that yet. I mean, I'm just generally not very good at weathering, but you know, I try. 
the scratches though I think are probably like the weakest point of the weathering uh, overall but overall I think it came out looking really good. Interesting how I was showing you guys how you can buff those metallic paints and on the gold I would definitely look out and be careful not to buff too much because I noticed that it definitely just from handling the parts and going through everything uh, a lot of a lot more of that gold uh, was buffed completely away than I would hoped and so you can see those gold parts uh, there's a lot of black on there some of that is just from like the chipping that I applied later but some of that is just from uh, quite a bit of that gold is actually just buffed completely off the parts so after all the painting there yeah obviously I decided to just add a little bit of ground texture vignette here with it just adding some sand for that all I did was just take this uh, kind of wood box little thing here and just take some sand and mix up some some water and white glue, like uh, Elmer's glue, sand, mix it all up, uh, layer it on there, and then just kind of adding some more wet glue, basically kind of water glue mixture and adding some more sand, using some more glue to add some uh, just little bits of plants, foliage kind of into there as well, just to kind of also help to give that uh, some nice colors. So I use like a mix of some like brown and like uh, dull green and a little bit of brighter green in there just to give it a nice mix of colors there for the plant life that you can see in there as well. And then just kind of set it all together and it came out like that, really cool. One last thing that I did too is just also add that little plaque on the front of there as well. There was a lot of great decals and while well, I stuck pretty much to the decal scheme as it was laid out in the instructions, um, there was a lot of great decals left over and I thought, well, I want to use some more of the decals, but I don't want to put any more on the kit. So I thought, why don't I make a little plaque to go on the base to use some more of those cool decals on there just to kind of add to that. So just made that as well and just uh, made just basically a little square piece of plot plate, painted it in like a dark navy blue, added those water slides on there, gloss coated it and just glued that right onto the front of there and really super simple. So here's the finished product. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Like I said, it was a fun little project to work on and I'm glad that I uh, decided to go this route with it. Basically glad that I found that uh, build online that gave me the idea to go this route with it because originally my, my idea was to keep it mostly in clear, which uh, I think it would look good. And I wouldn't be opposed to getting another one of these kits later and maybe having another one uh, to keep in clear. I think it does look cool, but I'm really happy with how this turned out as well. So I'm glad that I decided to go this route with it. Yeah, so let me know what you think down in the comments section and definitely check out this line of kits. I'm not sure if any of this particular kit are still available, but I believe there are some other similar ones in this line uh, that you guys might be able to find. You guys can check the link in the video description to USA Gundam Store. We do carry these. And again, I'm not sure about the availability of what is in stock now but i'm sure there's probably going to be more on the way in the future as well something to look out for if you guys are interested in something like this it was a fun little project so definitely worth checking out as always guys if you could also leave a like and make sure that you're subscribed if you're not subscribed that really helps out a whole lot so i really appreciate it thank you guys so much for checking out the video here today hope that you enjoyed it until next time hope you all have a great day I'll see you all later bye guys